The idea of, of responding to everything in real time, to being on top of everything in real time, not only is this not a recipe for productivity, it's a recipe for misery too. Summarizing all of Stoic philosophy, Epictetus says it comes down to persisting and resisting. Meaning, there's some stuff you should start doing, you should keep doing, that you should do. And then there's other stuff that you should stop doing, you should resist to it. I'm Ryan Holiday. I've written about Stoic philosophy now for almost 15 years. I've talked about it everywhere from the NBA to the NFL, special forces, sitting senators, and I've done a lot of videos on what a Stoic should do. You can check all those out. But in today's episode, I wanted to talk about things that Stoics should not do, things that Stoics don't do, that you should stop doing. So here we go, things Stoics don't do. Generally, Stoics are trying not to be afraid of things, but of all the things a Stoic tries specifically not to fear, it's change. Marcus Aurelius says, all things are born from change, right? Everything good that ever happened to you in your life came from change. A Stoic doesn't fear change because they're prepared for stuff, because they know they can handle anything. Marcus Aurelius in meditation says, what am I gonna do about tomorrow? He says, I'm gonna meet it with the same weapons that I met today, right? Knowing what you're capable of, knowing what you can handle, means you don't have to fear change. You don't need to cling to make everything the same. And part of the Stoic idea of indifference, it doesn't mean you don't care, but it means you're good either way. So because of the preparation a Stoic does, they don't need things to be a certain way. Stoic doesn't have to have a preference about how things are gonna go tomorrow, whether it's gonna be rainy or beautiful, whether it's gonna be hot or cold, whether people are gonna love them or hate them. They know what they're supposed to do. They can handle anything. So Stoic doesn't fear change, doesn't have preferences, right? Because we don't need to. We can handle anything that life throws at us. A lot of stuff happens every day, every minute, but here's the thing, most of it doesn't matter, right? Marcus really says you're better off not giving small things more attention than they're worth. Basically, don't sweat the small stuff, right? The stuff that's not up to you, the stuff that doesn't move you closer to where you wanna get in life, the stuff that distracts you from what you actually should be doing, you have to tune it out. We talked about this in one of the other videos, the idea that you don't have to have an opinion about this. It doesn't even have to register with you. You can ignore it, you can stay focused on what matters, you can ask yourself, is this essential, does it matter? And if it doesn't, what do you do? You ignore it. When someone criticizes me, I, I do this exercise for Marcus Aurelius. He, he says, think about this person. Think about what they just submitted to. Think about who they are. Think about what they're addicted to. Think about what they've ever accomplished. And what you realize is that this person whose opinion you were about to let supersede your own evaluation of yourself and your work is actually worse than meaningless. They're like the opposite of who you're trying to be. So it's good that they don't like what you're doing. You don't want their approval. Focus on what you think, focus on who you want to be. As he says, we love ourselves more than other people, but then for some reason we care about other people's opinions more than our own. That's insanity. You got to focus on who you are, on your own internal scorecard, on your sense of self. That's what you measure yourself against, not the nonsense of other people, not the worthless opinions, these people who quite frankly, you don't respect anyway. A stoic doesn't need to get even. Marcus Aurelius says the best revenge it's to not be like that. And this is a person who experienced coups, who was lied about, who was attacked constantly, right? So the best revenge is to not be like the person who wronged you. Seneca says that we, we get angry about things, but how ridiculous that is. He says, you never return a kick to a mule or a bite to a dog, right? A stoic understands that by nature of what we do, who we are, we're gonna get attacked, we're gonna get criticized. People suck, they're gonna hurt us, they're gonna do things. But what a stoic doesn't do, what you have to stop doing, is need to get revenge, need to get even, need to get your pound of flesh because someone did something to you. You're fine, you weren't harmed by it, you're gonna be all right, and you can let it go. People wake up and the, what's the first thing they do? They check their text messages, they check their email. They basically make themselves an item on someone else's to-do list. The quality of their day is determined about what so-and-so tweeted or what message came in or what the, the latest breaking piece of news is. And that's no way to live. Mark Cerullo says you have to stop being jerked around like a puppet 
you have to slow down. You want to be in control of your morning. You want to be in control of the inputs that are coming into you. You don't want to be starting the day from behind. You don't want to be starting from this place of freneticness. You want to be in control. So I think it's really important that you start the morning off right, that you start your day off right, and that you don't let things coming in determine the quality of your day, the quality of your life. There's a great story about Napoleon who famously wouldn't read his mail until three weeks after it arrived. He knew that most problems will resolve themselves. But if you're checking constantly, if you're so reachable, you'll be inserting yourself into things that you don't need to be inserted in. You'll be spending time on things that will resolve themselves. We can imagine Marcus Aurelius doing a similar strategy, or Epictetus, or Seneca. The idea of, of responding to everything in real time, to being on top of everything in real time, not only is this not a recipe for productivity, it's a recipe for misery too. You have to be willing not to know every single thing that's going on, to not be so reachable that anyone can interrupt you in your concentration at any time. Follow Napoleon's advice, sleep with your phone in the other room, leave your phone in the other room when you're going to do something important. Don't be so reachable. You don't have to let this get to you, Marcus Aurelius says. You don't have to let it upset you. You always have the option to have no opinion, he says. You can just let it go. You can let it drift by like clouds, as the Buddhists talk about when they talk about thoughts. You don't have to let it sink in. You don't have to let it harm you. You don't have to let it get you riled up. You don't have to get worked up. You don't have to respond. You can just let it go. I want you to know that. Don't have to let this get to you. You can just let it go. Epictetus says that when you look outside yourself for approval, you have settled, you've handed over your happiness or your autonomy. Meaning, and this is such a critical stoic idea when we talk about what's in our control, what's not in our control, how you should judge yourself, whether you're getting better, whether you're a success, whether you're rich, whether you're whatever it is, it can't be determined by other people. What you've done is hand over your life on a platter to other people. Obviously, this is wonderful when people are celebrating you and saying you're awesome, but what happens when that turns? Or right, what happens if the crowd is wrong? What happens if the times that you're in are valuing the wrong things. So Epictetus is saying that you want to look inward, you want to create your own standards, your own scorecard for what's important to you. So a Stoic doesn't look to outside sources, outside people, outside benchmarks for their success, for their happiness, for their self-worth. You find that internally. Epictetus said that philosophy wasn't this dry, abstract thing. It was a thing he said you should be talking about, writing down, reading about, exploring with other people all the time. He said constantly have it at hand. That's how I think about philosophy. And it's weird. For the last five years, every single day, I've been writing this free email about Stoic philosophy. It's been not just cool to meet all these fellow practitioners of Stoic philosophy, but in writing about it, talking about it, reading it for our podcast, I have got to internalize these ideas in a way that I never would have been able to under any other circumstances. That's the idea. Philosophy is something we're supposed to engage in, not keep in these dusty old books or read once and be done with. It's a constant process. And I think that's why the email has worked so well for the people reading about it and sharing it and talking about it, all of that as well. So I'd love to have you join us on this email. You can sign up at dailystoic.com slash daily email. It's totally free, no spam. You can unsubscribe whenever you want. I've basically given away a book for free every single year for five years, and I'm gonna keep on doing it until I drop dead. Check it out, dailystoic.com slash daily email.